Hello everyone and welcome to Wine Down Wednesdays. I'm your host Paula Taylor and this is episode 145. So tonight we're going to talk about why is integration so draining? What does that even mean, integration? Why is it draining? And then I was right up to the last minute, I was like, I don't know what we're going to do for the meditation. And then something came to me. So we're going to work on a recharging meditation for the lower Dantian. We'll talk more about what that means. So last week we talked about what is energetic literacy. And then we talked about what the bleep is going on right now. This is a little bit of an extension of that. As usual, you don't have to have watched or listened to that show, but you might want to go back and listen to that because there was a lot of good things that came up in that show. And one of the things we talked about was that stuff is getting crazy. We are, the energy we are getting, this more and more and more and more energy, these influxes of energy are continuing to increase. The intensity of the energy that's coming in is continuing to increase. Each full moon is getting more potent. We're having these activations that I've been helping people with starting at the crown and now we're working on the third eye. That That is coming up 11-11. That's, if you're in Tucson, I'm gonna do an activation. You can also go to my TikTok for some mini activations. Those will be coming. So we talked a lot last week about all of this energy that's been coming in and how overwhelming it can be. But we didn't talk much about what happens after we have this big influx of energy. And that is this period that I call integration. And and what tends to happen (laughs) is that we kind of go, sometimes on the show I say I hit a wall and and slid down. A lot of times that's what happens during integration. So I want to talk about sort of the energetic anatomy of of why that happens, of kind of what's going on, and then give you some tools to deal with that. Because again, this energy is going to con- continue to ratchet up over the next series of months, at least through the middle of next year. And the more tools you have at your disposal to, to, first of all, the more knowledge you have to understand what's going on, and then the more tools you have to to help yourself through that, the better able you will be to deal with this intense influx of energy that's going to be coming in on top of all the normal things that happen, all of our normal cycles. You know, we normally have cycles of energy and and this is like on top of all the normal stuff that's going on. We have the this huge intensity of energy that's been coming in. So let's talk a little bit kind of about like from an energetic anatomy standpoint, what happens when you have a big influx of energy. And I'm talking about kind of globally what's going on, but this is also what happens to you a lot of times when you receive an energy work session. When I do an energy work session on someone, one of the things I usually tell them after we're done is what to expect. And, And there's a variety of things, and we'll talk a little bit about that because everybody's different and depending on what you received in the session, things might be different. And sometimes when I work on someone specifically, I get a better idea of what might happen for them. But typically what happens is when you have a big influx of energy, you end up getting really tired and you might, what I tell people is you might feel like you really want to go to bed early tonight or you want to lay down and take a nap. Honor that. And so let's talk about why, because again, this is, this is all about energetic movement and kind of how our bodies deal with it. It's, it's all about energetic literacy. I should have come up with that word years ago or that, that term. So what happens when you have a big influx of energy, whether it's this kind of global influx that we've been receiving, whether you receive energy from another person. The other thing that came to me when I was thinking about this, is because sometimes I say energy is everything or energy work is everything. And and if you're not thinking about it in these terms, it might not come to your mind. But anything that moves energy is energy work. So any movement of emotion is actually energy work. And what came to me when I was thinking about this was grief. So when my dad was in hospice, we weren't really physically active. You're pretty much just waiting. But there was so much emotional movement that you're moving energy all the time. You know, you're trying to say goodbye to this person and, and deal with the fact that they're going to be leaving. And, and there's all of this grief and this emotion that's coming up. That is exhausting. It is emotionally exhausting, but it is it is actually physically exhausting. And that is because we're moving so much energy. So anytime you're in a really charged emotion, 
emotional situation, whether, you know, there's a lot of tension, whether there's anger, whatever it is, that is moving a lot of energy and it requires this kind of period of integration afterwards and rest and then recharging, which is what we're going to do in our meditation tonight. So we're talking about the energetic anatomy, but keep in mind that this applies to all sorts of daily situations. You know, if you go to work and it's like really intense, there's a lot of emotional stuff happening at work or there's a lot of tension or there's a lot of, you know, people are getting in fights, whatever it is, all of that is like requiring you to hold some space, either hold some space of protection, which requires energetic movement and and effort, or to kind of ground those emotions down to deal with that so that you're not kind of holding it in your space. Because if it gets stuck in your space, then you start to feel bad too. And that's another thing, being aware of the fact that if the people around you are having a lot of emotions, then you've got to understand what to do to kind of protect yourself, to ground your own emotions, to deal with the aftermath of that. So again, I'm talking in energetic anatomy, but this applies to a lot of situations. So anytime there's a big influx of energy, when we're, whether we're talking about this kind of these emotionally charged situations, whether we're talking about these full moons that are getting more powerful, whether we're talking about receiving energy work from someone, we talked about last week how if you think about in the another way I was thinking about it is like if you have a you know a still glass of water or let's say you put some coffee some coffee grounds in the bottom of water and then you pour a bunch of water in the water is going to end up getting all stirred up and the coffee grounds will get stirred up and, and you're going to get this kind of mud. So when we pour a bunch of energy into our system it stirs a bunch of stuff up. So the first thing that happens generally is that there's some emotional stuff that comes up. And it, a lot of times it's things like, oh, I thought I dealt with that. And like, here it is back again, because it got stirred up. It had sort of settled down somewhere in my body and now it's getting stirred up. So that's one of the things that happens. So we have this emotional movement and we've got to kind of look at those emotions and process those emotions. We go through those steps of spiritual processing, kind of awareness, the mental processing, what's going on here, the physical processing or releasing. All of that takes energy and that can be very tiring. So that is one of the things that after a big influx of energy, we sometimes end up feeling drained or tired. That's one of the reasons why. The other reason why is or another reason why, not the only other reason, but another reason why is, is the actual, let's talk a little bit about the actual energetic anatomy of what's happening. So when energy comes into our system from, from wherever it's coming, there, there's a few different things that can happen. First of all, it can kind of hit a barrier and just not make it into our field. Sometimes that happens. More often, it does make it into our field, maybe not all of it, but some of it makes it into our field. And then what happens is we've got to figure out, usually unconsciously, what to do with that energy. How do we integrate that energy into our system? That's why I'm calling this integration. There's the emotional integration, like it's stirred up emotions. You know, how do I deal with these? How do I integrate these emotions or release these emotions? But there's this actual physical phenomenon of new energy coming into the system. And and the the other thing about that too is that if we have stagnancy in our system, just like I talked about last week, if you have kind of a stagnant pond and then you run your feet along the bottom of it, it stirs things up. So if we have any density in our energetic field, whether that's outside of the body, whether it's inside the body, and new energy comes in, first of all, it stirs stuff up again. So that's the energetic anatomy of that. And then those emotions come up because emotions are energy in motion. That's what people say a lot of times. The other thing that happens is that the energy's got to figure out where to go. So if our if our energy field is really dense and there's not a lot of movement and then all this energy comes in, it's like there's almost this kind of tug of war of like where does the new energy go and where does it fit? And it's kind of I've used the example before, you know, it's like if I if I buy a bunch of new clothes and I bring them home and I'm trying to put them in my closet and there's already a bunch of clothes in there, things are going to fall off the hanger and like we're going to have to reorganize the closet in order to incorporate this new energy in order to integrate this new energy. That actually takes 
physical energy because again remember energy is physical matter it's just not something we can see so when we have this influx of energy we've got to figure out what to do with the energy and so what happens a lot of times is that we get really tired because our conscious mind needs to get out of the way so that the unconscious and and if you believe in like spirit guides and the and the kind of helpers that we have they can figure out like we've got these little elves you can think of them as cleaning elves and they're going to reorganize your closet so that you can fit more clothes into your closet and you can figure out you know oh maybe maybe I'm going to reorganize the closet like if I'm going to add a bunch more pants like maybe I'll put all my pants together and I'll put all my shirts here and maybe I'm going to stack my shoes here so this is happening on an unconscious level for most of us and what that means is we need to be asleep and I tell people this all the time when they come for sessions Sometimes people fall asleep in sessions and sometimes they kind of get upset about it because they feel like they're missing out on something. And that actually happens because we, 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 like me and my spirit guides, whoever is working on you, we need you to be out of the way consciously so that we can actually do the energetic movement that needs to happen. And sometimes the conscious mind, because it's so linked to the ego mind, has some resistance to that. So if you fall asleep, that gets that kind of ego conscious mind out of the way so things can get reorganized and integrated and, and sort of resettled in your system. So that is one big reason why after you have a big influx of energy, you might feel completely drained and exhausted because you need rest. You need to get your conscious mind out of the way. Your body needs rest because this is a physical process. So think about when we sleep, our body does things like repair itself. You know, our, our, on a cellular level, we start turning over cells and all of these little things are happening. None of this is conscious. You know, we don't have any idea what our body's doing while we're asleep. It's doing all of these really amazing amazing things. It's the same thing for this energetic integration. When we are asleep, our body, our energetic body is kind of integrating and reorganizing and maybe releasing some things we no longer need. So after a big influx of energy, it, and it's, it, it can be a little bit frustrating. And I've been there before too, until I really started getting the understanding of this. So leading up to the eclipse last week, I had three or four days where I was just like full of energy. The energy was like ramping up and ramping up and ramping up. And then the day of the eclipse, it was, it was really intense. And I, I did a little video on TikTok because I was going over to my energy practitioner's round table that morning and it was such a strange experience. Like at first of all, I could feel the energy and I walked outside and I could see the shadows looked different and there was just this really like potent sort of feeling in the air. And then I was driving over to my office and I didn't see like a single other car. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Like that's never happened to me, you know, at any time. This was like 930 on a Saturday morning, like not a single car in this like two and a half mile drive or whatever on the main road that that I was on and and so I started to get kind of freaked out I was like I felt like I was in an episode of the Twilight Zone because I was like am I the only person on earth what is happening so I started looking around and then I could see like there were people on the sidewalks here and there and there were there were kind of cars on the side roads but I had this really intense feeling like there were sort of two different versions of reality going on and, and I was sort of in one of them that was this really potent flow of energy and then everything else around me was kind of almost like it was moving in slow motion or, or sort of like drab. It was really strange. The energy was extremely potent. And so, so sometimes while the energy is pouring in, you might actually feel more energetic. You might feel like, oh, there, you know, I'm like, I'm getting more stuff done and I'm going and going and going. I'm not as tired as I've been. And so it's like, you get this kind of, there's a little bit of like excitement with that. There's sometimes a little bit of overwhelm with that because what tends to happen is, what reflects back to us is that we get really busy and I've been really busy for a long time and I've also been really tired. And so I had these few days where I was like, yeah, I got energy. I'm doing things and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then I woke up Sunday and it was like, Meh. like <laughs> I was just totally exhausted. And I heard somebody use the term eclipse hangover. <laughs> And I was like, that's totally what it felt like. And, and that is exactly what we're talking about here with this idea that you've got this huge influx of energy and it kind of builds and builds and builds and builds. And then when you wake up the next day or like whenever it hits you, 
and you have that what feels like kind of like a slump, it can be really disappointing and you can actually feel like, like maybe, oh, like I failed in some way. Like I, you know, I was, uh, things were ramping up and I was really going and why, why all of a sudden am I so tired? Like it doesn't make any sense. And I used to kind of get upset about that and feel like I was doing something wrong until I really understood that like this is really literally meant to come in waves. I mean, energy travels in waves. So you have this big wave of an influx of energy and maybe you kind of really get a lot of things done. It's like the expansion and then, oh, there's got to be the contraction because we can't expand without the contraction. We can't breathe in if we don't breathe out, right? And and I've talked about this, like using kind of the idea of labor before, you know, there's this expansion and we birth and everything's so wonderful. And then like, ugh. We're back in the contraction. And that is kind of this same process. The energy pours in and we might feel kind of almost, you know, like like things are getting elevated. You know, there's this euphoria kind of that comes in. And then all of a sudden it's like, it's sometimes it's really like you ran into a wall and it's all of a sudden like, I don't understand. I was doing so well. Why am I suddenly like feeling like I can't get out of bed? That is because your body is telling you it's time for integration. Your body is telling you to rest because it doesn't do you any good for all this energy to come in your system if you don't know where to put it, if you don't utilize the energy. Because what will happen if you don't honor that and you don't work within this integration is that you will so a lot of times get sick. That's what used to happen to me over and over again. I would get really drained and then I would get sick. So, so one of the things, one of the reasons to work with this consciously is to avoid that happening. And this time I was very aware. And I mentioned last week, I had a lot of things going on. I had some family emergencies. It was like really crazy. And so anywhere that I could, I was taking the opportunity to do the integration work, to rest, to do some really thoughtful kind of movement. We're going to do some, today we're going to do some recharging of the lower Dantian. That is what I did. I spent about 20 minutes one day when I had some time doing some Qigong exercises, doing things to recharge, to allow the energy to distribute through my body, through my system. Because what will happen is if all that energy pours in and it has nowhere to go, then you're, you're just going to kind of shut down and you're not really going to use that energy. You're not going to be able to integrate that energy. Sometimes we've got to expand our system and make it bigger so we can hold more of that energy. That is part of that integration. And that takes a lot of effort physically, emotionally, energetically, mentally sometimes. So yeah, we get really tired. We start feeling really drained. And it's important to understand you're not doing anything wrong when that happens. We are so programmed to believe that we have to go, go, go and constantly be productive that when things like that happen, it feels, it can feel like a personal failure. That is how this is, that is the physical process of how this is meant to work. Influx of energy, maybe, you know, this kind of like a big high and then the low's got to come and then the high and the low. And the low, that's the thing that I'm really starting to understand is that if you embrace the low, it's not really such a low. It doesn't feel like a disappointment when you come back down from the high. If you understand it's a natural part of the ride and you start working with it. And the other thing is, if you start learning how to work with this integration process, instead of like going, like I used, I said, I used to get so drained, I would get sick. It was like me. And then I was like way down at this bottom. If you understand what's happening and you start working with the integration and you honor the rest, then you can actually start to kind of get yourself back on the upswing faster and with less effort than you would if like this was just happening to you. You know, there's this phrase, things are happening for you, not to you. And, it, and it's one of those things that like, it's a little bit like, oh yeah, I understand what that means it's a lot harder to integrate that knowledge to really understand like if I'm feeling really tired today, that's happening for me, not to me. And maybe I need to rest. And the, the hard part of that, of course, is that we don't always have, you know, I can't lay in bed all day. I don't, I can't remember the last time I had the opportunity to just lay in bed all day. I just don't have time to do that. And so what, 
what we need to learn to do is, first of all, normalize rest so you can lay in bed all day if you need to, but also find those little, like, intervals of rest and recovery, intervals of restoration, intervals of recharging. There's something called power napping that I've been doing for a long time where you sort of, and you don't, some people actually sleep, sometimes I do, but if, you know, I might, like yesterday, here's a perfect example of this. So I had a client yesterday, after I did my client, I was supposed to go over and and visit with someone and I, and I was just like dragging. I was just dragging. I, my energy was so low. And so I, and so, you know, I went and I saw my client and we had a good session and I, you know, I wasn't, I was able to do that. I had enough energy to do that, but it was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this next thing. And I, so what I did was I said to the person, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to come. I'm feeling really depleted. Let me see what I can do. So after I saw my client, I, I actually, I, this is one of my favorite things to do. I turned the table heater up on my massage table, nice and high. And, and I, I lied, I lied down (laughs) and I lay down on my table and I just took about 15 minutes to allow myself to integrate. And, and there's, there's different ways to do this. And the more you work with this, the more you'll get your own intuitive flow. One of the things I like to do is invite my guides and invite my archangels, invite whoever's coming in and basically receive a session. And I will just say I'm open to receive and and I will allow them to work on me and I just sort of get out of the way, which sometimes means like I take a little snooze or sometimes I, a lot of times I end up having visions and they sort of show me things. I talk a lot about how I have these crazy visions I don't sit in meditation for hours a day. I don't have time for that. Most of these crazy visions that I have like happen in a period of 10 to 15 minutes or 15 to 20 minutes. So yesterday I set a timer so I I knew when I would have to get up for 15 minutes and I just had a nice power nap and, and I invited myself to receive work and I had I had like Arch- Archangel Raphael and he was working on my heart and I had another Archangel working at my feet and I had this beautiful sort of like crown opening and and when I was coming to the end of my time they said we're not done here and I said I've got to get up and keep going but I promise you that I will spend some time before I go to sleep tonight so that we can finish our session and that's another thing that's really important is this this understanding that you are in charge of your your own energy and you're in charge of your spiritual support team so like when they tell me we're not finished here we need another 10 or 15 minutes or whatever I can say to them listen I can't do that right now but I can do it later and that's something I didn't used to understand I didn't used to do that and I didn't used to honor it I would say like oh yeah I'll get back to it when I can well <laughs> if you don't get back to it that is when the things are going to happen that start really knocking you down because you're not honoring your body's request for what it needs. My body really needed that energetic work. It really needed that physical rest and it probably needed for me to turn my brain off for a little while. And all I had was that 15 minutes and then I had to kind of move on to my next thing, but it made a huge difference. And because I made the commitment to my spiritual support team to come back and I did that, then last night I had had a really expansive vision right before I was getting ready to go to bed and they came back and they they were able to finish the session and I think sometimes this happens and this might go on for like a week or two where whenever I have time I invite them back in and we continue doing this work most of us don't have the freedom to spend hours of time working on ourselves and I'm completely aware of that and I'm kind of in the same boat. So what I'm talking about is finding little parcels of time where you can do the things that serve you, whether it's just laying down for 15 minutes and like turning everything off and turning your phone on, do not disturb and giving yourself just that amount of time to physically rest your body, whether it's going to bed early when sometimes, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's my husband. I'll say it's like 745 and I kind of want to go to bed and we usually don't, but like what if you did? Maybe your body really needs you to go to bed that early. And I will sometimes go to bed early and and maybe read or do something that's relaxing. 
it's really important to honor that need. It's really a need for integration. And, and what that shows up as is this feeling of physical exhaustion and needing rest, this feeling of being drained, like, like I just don't have any more to give, especially emotionally and sometimes mentally. When I was having all of these things happening, there was a couple of days where my husband would like ask me a question and I would just be like, I, I, I got nothing. Like he came in right before I was getting ready to start the show and like asked me a financial question. And I was like, I cannot answer that right now. I will come back to that with you later. And that is one of those things that is a self care thing that I have learned over the last few years. Like it's okay for me to say to someone, I can't, I don't have the capacity for that right now, but I promise we'll come back to it when I do. And, and when you start to practice that level of self care, first of all, you're setting boundaries. That's a way of setting boundaries, whether it's with another person, whether it's with your spiritual support team, whether it's with yourself, you know, you might say, Oh, I really need rest. And then you just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And, and it feels like it's an external thing, but it's really coming from inside. There, you really, there are opportunities that you can find, no matter how busy you are, to do these little self-care things, to take, I was in a hospital the other day, and I, there was a beautiful view out the window, and I was like, I'm going to take 15 to 20 minutes and do some Qigong, because I really was feeling depleted, and I knew, and that's the other thing, the more you do this, the more you will understand what your body's actually asking you for. Sometimes it's really just like, rest. In that situation, like I started to feel kind of like I had been sitting a lot and I was like, eh, I need to get up and move around. That was kind of the feeling I had. And I, I couldn't really leave and I couldn't really go anywhere. And then it was like, wait a minute, I know how to exercise without even moving my feet. And I went through all these beautiful Qigong exercises. And then pretty soon I felt completely recharged, like I, like I had been lying down and taking a nap. So understanding that this idea of integration, it's not all just rest. It's not all physical rest. Sometimes it's mental rest. Like I need to put my phone down and stop looking at it for a little while. I need to get off social media for a day. Like that's mental rest and emotional rest. Sometimes it's like, I know this person texted me and I'm going to get back to them, but I'm not going to do it right now. I'm going to give myself some time because I'm just at a point where I need, I don't have the capacity to do that. So it's these little self-care tasks that you allow yourself. It's allowing yourself to care for yourself. And what you will find again is, so I had this kind of like, and it started Sunday. And then yesterday it was really bad. But because I honored that and I, I gave myself permission to take that 15 minutes to, to kind of allow myself to receive. And then I did it again tonight. Then today I have much more energy again because I listened to what my system was asking for. Your system will tell you, this is what I need from you. I need you to get out of the way and go to sleep. Even if it's just for a little while, like, okay, check, I'll do that. I need you to move around and listen carefully with that because we're, again, that's another place where we're so programmed to like for years and years and years to me, like if I thought about exercise, it was like, had to be like, ugh. I'm really going to do it. You know, like it couldn't be like gentle exercise or just going for a gentle walk. It was like, if I'm going to move around, you know, it's got to be, I got to burn calories. That's what, where I was really coming from from for a long time. And what I find now is like, yeah, sometimes that's like, sometimes I'm like, man, I got a lot of energy. I want to like do a really brisk walk or I want to, yesterday we went, was that yesterday? We went to the gym anyway. And it was the first time in like weeks. I think that was a couple days ago. Time is still all wonky for me. But anyway, Honoring the type of activity your body is asking for. Is it asking for like gentle movement? Is, is it asking for a walk? Is it asking for something more intense? The more you honor those, those internal requests when they come up, the more clearly you will receive information from yourself. This is information is coming from yourself. And we talk about spirit guides and, and it's all just you. It's all just the, the global version of us, this source version of us that's telling us, you know, I, for the last couple of days, I haven't had much of an appetite. And like, I'm like, oh, this is the time I usually have a snack and I feel like I should be hungry. Not hungry, not going to eat. That is the kind of thing. The more you do that, the more you take care of yourself, 
the more that energy can get integrated. I had a big influx of energy. So for whatever reason right now, my body, it's not, it's not focusing on having me eat. It's focusing on something else. And again, the more you do that, the easier it gets. And the more you will see the, like, like this, this previous, like two weeks of my life has probably been some of the most difficult time I've had. There's been a huge amount of emotional movement going on, a lot of emotional stuff coming up. There's been a ton of just like mental trying to figure things out, trying to solve problems, like all of that stuff. And then there's been this like physical demand on my time. I have to be here. 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 It like, and I could be so drained that I am sick. That is what my historical pattern would be. And not only am I not there, but I actually feel pretty good considering. And yeah, there's been a couple days where I'm just like, ugh. But then because I'm doing this practice, then, then I integrate the energy and then I have room for more. And that's ideally we've always got fresh flowing energy. We've got energy flowing down from the top of our heads into the earth. We've got energy flowing up from the earth into our feet and kind of fountaining out. We've got this energy around the body. I mean, there's so much accessible to us to recharge ourselves if we understand how to do that. So what we're going to do tonight is in the meditation, we're going to focus on refilling, recharging the lower Dantian. That's the bottom part of your belly. And I did the other day, I was watching a Qigong video and I, I was reminded there's an upper Dantian and a lower Dantian. So technically it's the lower Dantian. I talked about this a little bit, I think last week, but let's go into what this is a little bit and then talk about what it does and how to recharge it. So this sacral chakra area just above like in the pelvis kind of just above the pubic bone to your belly button that area in between there it has a lot of different names the sacral chakra i just said one of them that's the orange one on the poster behind me it's also the hara it's also the lower dantian and some people just refer to it as the womb space and it womb space is the birth of creativity. It doesn't, you don't have to, I don't have a physical womb anymore. There's a lot of people who don't have a physical womb. You have a womb space. And that's, I like the Chinese kind of view of this. So that's why I'm using this Dantian term or lower Dantian. And what this is, this is actually a storehouse of energy. So when you get depleted, it's almost like you have this little extra battery and you can pull energy from here to kind of run on. And, but just like any other kind of battery, it is going to get discharged. It is going to get depleted. So if you're not regularly recharging this extra storehouse of energy, then when you need it, there's nothing to pull from. And when you do pull from it, like I have been, because I've been depleted over the last few weeks, like I did that Qigong exercise um, or kind of group of exercises when I was in the hospital room, I recharged, I refilled my lower Dantian and that gave me the energy to pull from again because I was not able to really practice some of the larger practices I usually do. And, and because it was so depleting, I was being, there was so much being required of me. I had to pull from that storehouse. In Chinese medicine, this area is linked to your immunity. Makes total sense. So like if you have a pathogen come into your body, you know, virus, bacteria, whatever it is, your body starts trying to fight that off. That requires extra energy. So you can pull energy from that Don Tian, your body, you know, your body's intelligent. So you can pull that energy and kind of use that energy. But again, you've got to recharge that area. You've got to refill that area with energy. And there's lots of different ways to do it. Qigong is a great way to do it. We're going to keep it simple because that is what this show is all about. We're going to use intention and we're going to use a little bit of specialized breath work with, with kind of a special um, sort of movement of the muscles in this area to really kind of bring some energy into that Dantian while we do tonight's meditation. So just briefly, let's talk about what we're going to do. And then, of course, I'll describe it in the meditation. 
So there's a couple things we're going to do. Just like we talked about last week, we kind of have to let go of that old energy. Got to let go of what's no longer serving us. If we want to refill this area and recharge it, we want to recharge it with new, fresh, beautiful, vibrant chi or life force energy. So we we want to just spend a minute to kind of let go of the, the gunky stuff that's no longer serving us. So in order to do that, we're going to do something that it's a yogic breath. It's called lion's breath. We're going to take a big breath in through our nose. This is a funny one. We're going to breathe out through the mouth. We're going to stick our tongue out. And then we're going to make kind of a a loud, sort of like a ha sound. It looks really funny. It's super powerful. We're not going to do very many of them. It's a good way to get yourself lightheaded. But what that does, it actually, we're breathing out a lot more than we normally do. And it really helps us kind of get the lungs clear. It kind of helps us get toxins out of the body. So we're going to use that breath to kind of let go of any energy that's no longer serving us. Then we're going to use a special breath um, on the belly where we're going to just take really deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And I wish I'm normally I sit a little further back, so I'm going to actually scoop back a little bit so you can see my belly here on the camera. And of course I'll describe it. So if you're listening to the podcast, don't worry that you can't see me. So we're going to take a breath in and as we breathe in, we're really going to let our belly kind of pooch out. As we breathe out, we're going to focus on kind of bringing the belly to the spine. So this idea of like bringing your your navel, your belly button, all the way back to the spine and engaging those muscles. And that actually kind of brings energy into that, that lower Dantian area. And then as you breathe out, we're going to relax the belly. Then as we breathe in, we're going to kind of pull the belly back in. And this is a really easy way to kind of direct energy here. We're also going to have our hands on that area. Great way to direct energy. That's literally what we do to move Reiki when we, when we're, that's, everybody can do Reiki. Having attunements opens your channel further, but Reiki just means channeling energy through your hands. Channeling that chi or ki. So ki is the Japanese word for chi, life force energy, reiki, universal life force energy. So we're going to use our hands to direct energy here. And then we're going to use intention. We're just going to think about really charging up this area, filling this area up with fresh energy. And and doing that, again, we're going to do probably 10 minutes of that tonight. It goes a really long way. So if you feel depleted, you can do this anytime you feel depleted. And most of us, you can do, I was doing this belly breath when I was working the other day because I was just doing some stuff on the computer and it doesn't make any strange noise. I mean, it, it sounds like you're deep breathing, but no one can really, I was working from home anyway, but you know, it just, if anybody sees anything, it just kind of looks like you're doing some abdominal exercises. But as you engage those muscles, again, you actually direct energy into that lower Dantian, filling up that storehouse. So the next time you need it, that energy's there. And if you make that a regular practice, the other thing is you can make, you can add more and more and more and more energy to this space. So the, when you need energy, it's really there. You can train this space to hold a lot of energy for you so that you, when you start to get depleted, you can really get back in and, and charge it back up, use as much as you need, charge it back up. This is something that you can do anywhere, anytime. And it's very simple. That's another thing. Random tangent. I didn't even make it into the meditation. Being really thirsty good sign that you're maybe integrating, honor that. Drink a lot of water. Being really hungry is a good sign that you're probably integrating. Don't judge yourself. Just give yourself food. And yeah, if you can give yourself nutritious food, try to do that. But whatever you can, like (laughs) this last, I've just been grabbing anything I can grab. And, And your body knows how to use the energy. And and being intentional about that. Even if I'm eating something that's not necessarily all that good for me physically, I can tell my body, I use this energy for the highest good. I use this energy to recharge myself. And and it directs your energy in a way that, that maybe makes that sort of unhealthy thing a little less unhealthy in the grand scheme of things. <sighs> so let's meditate together. 
So for this meditation, you will want to be sitting up if at all possible. It's really going to help you get a sense of this movement of the belly as we recharge this lower Dantian. So to start with, as we always do, let's just take three to five deep oxytocin breaths, just telling the body it's safe, coming fully present into this moment. You're going to breathe in through the nose, let the belly float out. Then you're going to sigh out the mouth using an audible ha sound from high to low. This vibrates the vagus nerve. It tells the body to come out of that fight, flight, freeze response and into the ease response. So just a few of those as you're ready. <sighs> Taking a few moments as you do these breaths to notice how your body feels. If you're noticing any tension, maybe just doing some really gentle movement. I've got some tension in my shoulders and my neck, so I'm just doing just about maybe 50% of my capacity. This is not a big stretch here. Just kind of doing some gentle shrugging of my shoulders, moving my neck around. If you're finding some tension in the lower back, you can do some little torso circles back and forth. Again, just about 50% of your capacity. You could circle your wrists and your ankles a little bit. Just getting a little bit of gentle movement in the body to move that energy of tension out. So before we focus on recharging and refilling our lower Dantian, that sacral chakra or hara or womb space area, we are going to do a few lion's breaths. And this is a great cleansing breath. This is a great way to kind of release some toxins from the body. And we'll just set the intention that as we perform these breaths, we are releasing anything that no longer serves us physically, emotionally, mentally and energetically. I'm going to take a nice deep breath in through your nose. You're going to breathe out and as you breathe out you're going to stick your tongue out as far as you can and make a loud ha roaring sound. That's why we call it lion's breath. So let's do three of those. <sighs> Try to breathe all your breath out, even if it makes you cough a little bit, that's actually a good sign. Two more. One more. finish with one of those nice deep oxytocin breaths or another few breaths in through the nose out through the mouth releasing anything here that's not serving you maybe adding a little bit of movement if it feels good maybe even a little bit of a shake in the shoulders in the arms wrists maybe a little bit in the ankles just letting go of that dense energy that's not serving and then coming still, place your hands together in a prayer position in front of your heart for just a moment. And as we set the intention to call in energy to our hands, take a moment to allow the, the top of the head, the crown chakra to open, just beaming a beautiful bit of that universal life force energy, that chi, that ki, that prana, unconditional love and light just let that come in through your head and all the way down through your body like a beam of light like a pillar of light coming in through your head down through your neck and your shoulders down through your torso and your hips and your legs and your feet beautiful beam of light coming all the way through the body and notice as you do this with your hands together at your heart perhaps your hands begin to heat up calling this beautiful universal life force energy this ray key into your hands here into your whole body but especially coming out through your hands begin to just very slowly 
kind of rubbing your hands back together, pulling the Mr. Miyagi from Karate Kid, that was Reiki that he was doing. This is a great way to call this energy into your palms. You'll feel your hands heating up. Continuing to call that energy in through the head, all the way down through the body, and now out into the palms of your hands, coming through your beautiful heart space. And then as you're ready, bring your hands down to the lower part of your belly. You can put them one on top of each other. You can put them next to each other. Whatever feels good here. So we're in the area between the belly button and the pubic bone, this sacral chakra region or the lower dantian, the hara, this womb space area. So this is a beautiful repository of energy we can call on when we're drained. And what we want to do is periodically recharge this area with fresh new energy so that it is ready for us the next time we need it. So we're directing energy here. Maybe you feel your hands heating up. Maybe you feel some tingling. Maybe you don't feel anything and that's fine. We're using intention here. So just setting the intention out loud or in your mind, I send unconditional love and light into my Dantian, into my sacral chakra, into my Hara, into my womb space, whatever feels good there. I recharge my energy with love and light for the highest good. So now we're going to add a specific type of breathing to kind of strengthen this energy that we're drawing into this space. You might put one hand on top of the other. That might help you kind of feel so above one hand, kind of right at the belly button and one hand below. This will help you kind of feel the muscular engagement here. So what we're going to do, we're going to breathe in through the nose. We want to, we want that belly to really pooch out as you're doing that, really push your belly out as you're breathing in. And then as you breathe out through the mouth, we're actually going to pull that belly button back to the spine, kind of engaging those abdominal muscles. And then as we breathe in through the nose, we're going to let that belly really push out again. And then as we breathe out through the mouth, we're gonna pull that navel to the spine. If it feels better for you, you can breathe in and out through the nose. Breathing in, letting your belly really pooch out. And then breathing out, pulling that navel back to the spine. So we're gonna continue that breathing just at your own pace. Breathing in, really letting the belly pooch out. And then breathing out through the nose or through the mouth, pulling that navel in. I like to breathe out through the mouth because I feel like it allows for more release of any energy that's not serving me. If you feel like you're really drained and you're not so worried about letting go of energy, then you might want to breathe in and out through the nose. That kind of keeps that energy building up in the system. So we're directing energy using that Reiki, using that universal life force energy through our hands into this area. And then as we breathe in, we're letting the belly pooch out. As we breathe out, we're really pulling that belly button to the spine. And we're using this intention to recharge this lower Dantian, to recharge this beautiful repository of energy that supports our immune system. It allows us to pull energy when we're feeling drained, if we get into really intense emotional situations, if we're just kind of running on fumes, we've been physically exhausted, we've been mentally exhausted, you, your brain is tired, you're just feeling completely fried, this beautiful repository of energy will serve you, but only if we take the time to refill it, to recharge it with this beautiful love and light. So continuing that breath, if at any point this becomes really uncomfortable, the breathing kind of with the pushing your belly in and out, you can let go of that and just move back to a regular long deep breath, keeping your hands on that area to charge it up with energy. You might notice your hands are getting really hot here. They might feel cold. You might feel tingles. You might actually start to feel some responses in the rest of your body. You might feel even a little bit nauseous 
when we direct a lot of energy into the body, sometimes we can feel almost a little bit unpleasantly lightheaded. You can feel a little bit of dizziness. So give yourself permission to be gentle here. Back off as you need to. Let go of that in and out motion with the belly if you need to. If you need to take your hands off your belly for a moment and direct them somewhere else, you can do that. If you feel like you need to discharge some energy, you can actually take your hands off the belly and shake them. That's a great way to kind of let go of any excess energy if it's just feeling like it's too much. But if this is feeling good, just stick with one or both of these exercises, this breathing out and kind of pulling the navel in as you breathe out and then letting the belly pooch out forward as you breathe in and directing energy at your belly at this Dantian. I'm going to assist you by sending some of my Reiki through this transmission. So continue with this breath if it feels good through this little bit of sound healing. If you're ready to let that go, then just move back to a long, deep breath. There's nothing to prove here. There's no competition. You don't win a prize for doing this longer than anyone else. So as you're ready to let go of that kind of abdominal engagement, let yourself do that. If you feel like keeping it up, then allow yourself to do that. Just be really intuitive with this. So we're going to step into some sound here. I'm just adding some Reiki through this transmission. This will come through across time and space to assist you in recharging your energy repository, your beautiful lower Dantian. Continuing to send yourself energy here, continuing with this abdominal breath if it feels good. And just allowing yourself to receive for the last few moments here. Oh, Kasha Nataka, ye, oh, ah, Sasha, te, oh, na, ye, ah, ye. Que, anata, ye, oh, ah, ye, ah, ye, oh. We are not a year, we are. Say, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are, Let go of that big belly motion. Take a big deep breath in, sigh it out, add that audible ha sound if it feels good. Leave your hands on your belly for the last few moments here, but let go of that abdominal movement and just allow yourself to breathe naturally. You can take deep breaths as you need to, but you can also just release that breath. Let it move through you without any intention for a few moments. Just before we come away from the belly here, affirm with me out loud if possible. I am fully charged and my Dantian is lit up. I regularly allow myself to refill my energy repository. I know that when I am drained, I can easily recharge my energy with love and light for the highest good. As you're ready, slowly, with a lot of respect, 
moving your hands off the belly, you might find you want to kind of rub your belly a little bit, give your belly some love. It's probably an area that doesn't get a lot of love for most of us. That also kind of distributes some of this energy we sent into the belly. As you take your hands off, you might decide you like to shake them a little bit. That just shakes off any excess energy. Maybe three or four times. Bring your hands back together in front of your heart, palms together. Give yourself some gratitude for recharging your lower Dantian. It will serve you well. You can come back to this exercise whenever you feel you'd like to. Place your hands over your heart for a moment. Just give some of that beautiful energy that's still flowing into the heart. And one more time, call that energy down through the top of your head, into your face and your jaw, into your neck and your throat, down through your shoulders and your chest and your upper back, through that beautiful heart space, into your belly, down into that beautiful lower Dantian, fully charged now, ready for anything. Down through the hips and the pelvis, the thighs and the knees, the lower legs, ankles and feet. See yourself as a being of light here, drawing some beautiful energy up from the earth. That darker, rich, fertile energy mixing with this light energy with a beautiful flow up, out the top of the head, letting that energy fountain out your head and into the auric space around your body. Just fully recharging yourself, refilling every inch of your being with fresh love and light and rich support, rich earth energy. As you're ready, you can release your hands. Maybe begin to slowly move your body back and forth. Kind of moving in the torso if it feels good or just starting with your fingers starting with your ankles and wrists just coming back fully into the body here no rush being respectful of this shift we've just had it's coming back fully as you're ready to the rest of your day or evening Sad -nam. The truth of your identity is that you are a limitless being of energy and there is always energy available to refill and recharge you even when you are feeling drained. Take one more nice deep breath in through the nose, sigh it out through the mouth. And as you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I hope that you will come back to this. It is a really useful exercise. It is a simple exercise and it will make a difference. Have a beautiful rest of your evening and week and I will see you next week for Wind Down Wednesdays.